In the late 2000s, a small church took part in a ceremonial ritual with their holy sacrament, something they called sacramental cleansing water. But as they drank this sacrament, no prayers were said and no blessings took place. After all, this church claimed to be non-religious, so there were no gods, statues, or saints to pray to. As they raised their cup, they poured in several drops of this sacred sacrament, and then they drank it. Around the world, and specifically in the United States, thousands of ordinary people in ordinary homes watched online videos of these archbishops drinking their holy sacrament. And they too decided to drink this cleansing liquid, which they purchased from the church through an online donation. But many of these ordinary people in these ordinary homes did not drink the sacramental cleansing water for themselves. Instead, they forced their children to drink it and they gave it to these children over and over again, no matter what reaction they might have had. You see, this was not an ordinary church, and the sacramental cleansing water was anything but ordinary to drink, as the liquid they were drinking was chlorine dioxide. Our top story tonight, though, parents poisoning their children with bleach because they think it will cure autism. There's a product on the market that claims to cure everything from colds to cancer. Father Brad Austin, who declined standby guardianship rights in 2008, says his ex-wife is poisoning their children. She's giving Joshua and Jeremy bleach to try to cure their autism. And in 2020, this Florida church and some of its head archbishops would find themselves in the middle of a police raid and investigation federal agents named Operation Quack Hack. Back in 1996, a man named Jim Humble was in Guyana mining gold when four of his fellow miners fell terribly ill with malaria. According to Jim's own version of the story, he mixed sodium chloride with their drinking water and miraculously cured his crew members, who he claimed were back on their feet in no time. Jim Humble, who was born in Alabama and an ex-Scientologist, named the pale yellow liquid Miracle Mineral Solution and decided that the whole world should know about his invention. His first stop was in Africa, where he claimed to have treated thousands of patients with international Christian aid groups and said this came with varying success. Jim Humble gave Africans a solution made of a potentially dangerous chemical. Keep in mind, Jim Humble is not a medical specialist and has no training in medicine. Sodium chloride is a strong oxidant used as a disinfectant and for water treatment and purification. When ingested, Sodium chloride can cause nausea, vomiting, and even be life-threatening. But sometimes, marketing is more powerful than side effects. And with Jim Humble falsely claiming to have cured thousands in Africa and South America with the Miracle Mineral Solution, and praising the snake oil as a cure-all for everything from malaria, autism, and eye cancer to AIDS, MMS quickly gained popularity and inspired imitators worldwide. Eventually, even some well-known advocates like actress Lindsay Wagner began to recommend the self-proclaimed miracle drug as a cure for their ailments. But it was not until a man named Mark Grennan got his hands on MMS and claimed to got rid of all his family's health problems that things began to spiral even more out of control. Mark was a born-again Christian whose Catholic parents had converted to Mormonism and left their son a bit confused about where he belonged. Eventually, Mark, who did not attend Harvard, claimed that two angels visited him in Harvard Square, and he got the idea of establishing his own church. And this is where Jim Humble, the ex-Scientologist, steps in. After claiming success with MMS, Mark invited Jim to his home in the Dominican Republic, where the two began to make big plans together. Mark envisioned continuing the work Jim had started in Africa two decades earlier, supplying and selling MMS, focusing on the countries in the developing world where conventional medicines were not widely available, and where these snake oil salesmen would be less regulated. To move forward with their plan, Mark and Jim needed a firm, an organization, and what would have been a better way to bend the rules than to establish a church and say MMS was a ceremonial drink. In a later interview in 2020, Mark explained their decision by saying, quote, 
Because everything you do commercially is under the universal commercial code, okay? A church is completely separate from that code, statutes, and laws. That's why a priest can give a kid wine in church publicly and not get arrested. Because it's a sacrament. You can't arrest us from doing one of our sacraments, and I knew this. So that's why I said, let's do a church. End quote. And so it was. Jim Humble founded the Genesis II Church of Health and Healing within a week after moving to the Dominican Republic. Both he and Mark became archbishops, even though they described Genesis as a non-religious church. While they used biblical quotes on the church website, the point was to never serve any god. Jim, of course, claimed that the church was established to benefit mankind by, quote, bringing health to the world. In reality, Genesis Church was nothing more than a marketing cover to sell MMS. Product directions on their website instructed people to mix the sodium chloride solution with a citric acid, such as lemon or lime juice or another acid before drinking. In many instances, the sodium chloride is sold with a citric acid they call an activator. When the acid is added, the mixture becomes chlorine dioxide, a powerful bleaching agent. Court documents would later show Jim and Mark made the donations to the church for MMS set at a specific dollar amount and mandatory, something that is illegal for a U.S. tax-exempt church to do. Genesis 2 Church continued to claim MMS could cure any disease or disorder, including Alzheimer's, HIV, cancer, multiple sclerosis, depression, and autism. For each type of illness, the instructions on how to use MMS were different. For example, to get rid of kidney stones, the patient needed to ingest three drops every hour for eight hours a day for three weeks. And in case of a heart attack, they claimed two tablespoons of MMS would be needed to save the person's life. Unfortunately, Jim and his church's promises appealed to the seriously ill when nothing else had worked for them. But to attract a bigger audience, Genesis 2 Church needed to have a clear mission, and that is where Big Pharma comes in. While Jim and Mark and Mark's sons spread the word about MMS, they warned vulnerable people that the pharmaceutical industry is only after money and actually contributes to people getting sicker so the population would remain in constant need of drug companies. These beliefs have been linked to something called depopulation theory, a conspiracy theory that has been used by bad actors to discourage vaccination and became popular again once the pandemic started. It's important to note that in some cases, as with black and brown communities in the United States, concerns regarding medical experimentation are understandable. PublicHealthCommunicationsCollaborative.org elaborates that unethical and immoral medical experimentation, including drug testing, has occurred in the past in black and brown communities and requires vigilance to prevent today. But Jim Humble and Mark Grennan weren't concerned with people. They were concerned with marketing. And what better way to get people's attention than to establish an us-versus-them mentality? In Volume 2 of what Mark calls a book, he praises the healthy mindsets of people like Vladimir Putin. He complains how the medical and pharmaceutical industry is run by elites who have owned everything for centuries and calls them the medical mafia. Mark also refers to top scientists, chemists, and doctors of the world as, quote, evil sons of a motherless goat, aka Satan. Eventually, Mark and his sons, Jordan, Jonathan, and Joseph, began hosting seminars in several countries, including the U.S., New Zealand, and South Africa. They preached about MMS and how our bodies are a temple, and that we, quote, need to maintain said temple in a clean manner as God, our creator, demands, end quote. Although their seminars really had nothing to do with religion, this rhetoric and black and white thinking against Big Pharma began to attract fundamentalist Christian believers. The Grennans then held seminars for these people who paid $450 each to learn how to become so-called health ministers of Genesis 2 Church. By becoming a health minister in the church, they were then allowed to manufacture the miracle solution themselves. Not before long, the business was bringing in over $100,000 per year and beginning to look like a pyramid scheme. 
Genesis eventually claimed on their website that its mission had spread to over 135 countries with hundreds of churches and thousands of members. In the US, Genesis members were required to carry a card that read, quote, this card signifies that this member of the Genesis 2 Church of Health and Healing has the God-given, unalienable right to control and maintain their personal health. All members are exempt from any means not chosen, including but not limited to vaccinations, medications, x-rays, scans, mandatory voting, and health insurance mandated by a human government or authority." End quote. At this point, Genesis 2 Church had already begun to sound like a cult. But instead of following a strong, charismatic leader, Genesis members put their faith in the miracle mineral solution and the ideology surrounding it. Although Jim Humble did claim he was a billion-year-old space god from another galaxy, apparently he hadn't left all of his Scientology beliefs behind. Although the Genesis 2 church did not have a physical location or any gatherings, its network spread far and wide, and shortly after its establishment, Genesis became linked to the alarming activities of parents with autistic children, and the online communities these parents frequented had a cult-like feeling of their own. While autism spectrum disorder cannot be cured, a former Chicago real estate agent named Carrie Rivera was looking for experimental treatments to cure her son's autism when she stumbled across Jim Humble's teachings. But to her frustration, Carrie found absolutely nothing about Miracle Mineral Solution and its effects on the disorder online. So this real estate agent decided to do her own research and eventually wrote a book titled Healing the Symptoms Known as Autism, which was released in 2013, in which she inaccurately claims autism can be cured by ridding the body of parasites. Parasites she believes are caused by vaccines. Carrie would later become a bishop of Genesis 2 Church and in the process has had many of her YouTube videos and social media accounts deleted due to her spread of misinformation. Her books have also been removed from Amazon. Carrie now regularly posts her work on far-right and conspiracy websites and fled the U.S. to live in Mexico and later moved to Germany where her home was raided by German police in 2021. But that will come later in her story. Autism is a complex disorder with no one single cause. According to the U.S. Administration for Children and Families, they state, quote, While we do not know all of the causes of ASD, we have learned that there are likely many contributing factors, including genes, early brain development, and the environment, end quote. The website goes on to state, Children with ASD can learn and succeed in the classroom and beyond. Like every child, with the help of their families, providers, doctors, specialists, and communities, kids with ASD can thrive. There are no known treatments for ASD, and yet Carrie Rivera claims she developed a protocol to cure the disorder. In her words, children simply had to take an hourly dose of MMS, or in other words, bleach. By the time Carrie published her book, the FDA had already received dozens of complaints claiming the substance had caused injuries and even death. But that did not stop these online communities from growing in size and perpetuating Carrie's misinformation. After Carrie's book, Healing the Symptoms Known as Autism, was published, some of the private groups on Facebook for these parents began to fill with posts about mothers experimenting with chlorine dioxide. In addition, the parents exchanged tactics and tricks on an anonymous message board hosted on Carrie's website. There, these mothers casually talked about how to stop their children from resisting the treatment, how to force them into a chlorine dioxide bath, or how to deliver the solution through a catheter. Meanwhile, moderators of the forum advise parents not to share that they're giving their child MMS with anyone outside of the community. In addition, Instructions on how to avoid the attention of social services were provided. In other words, most knew what they were doing could get them in trouble, but continued anyway, even after some parents reported their child was experiencing severe symptoms. One parent wrote, quote, My daughter vomits every day. We have been on CD for two months, and since one month, she is vomiting almost every day, sometimes twice, today three times. Have any of you had this? End quote. 
Some posts included pictures of bloody feces, lesions, and horrible rashes. But the moderators were swift to comment that rashes are part of the detox process for many, as the skin is the biggest detox organ we have. In addition, some MMS enthusiast moms posted photos of their child's stool, showing stomach-churning lumpy parts that they claimed were parasites or ropeworms that had exited the child's body after doses of chlorine dioxide. But the thing is, autism is not caused by vaccines, and the lumps in their children's stools were not parasites. A South African doctor, Dr. Louise Lindenberg, tested three stool samples provided by a parent of a child who had been treated with MMS. In her conclusion, Dr. Louise Lindenberg stated, quote, "The microbiology did not reveal any parasites or even eggs." Histology confirmed that it was a combination of mucus, plant material, probiotic flora, and gut cells. End quote. Instead of curing anything, the parents were destroying their children's intestinal lining and causing other severe health issues, as chlorine dioxide can cause irreparable damage to a child's body. Fortunately, two mothers, Melissa Eaton and Amanda Siegler, eventually began to fight against the extremely dangerous trend by sending screenshots of the post to the local Child Protective Services Division. In addition, they reported their findings to the FDA, the Department of Justice, and child abuse organizations. The so-called treatment had unsurprisingly already caused disagreements and even guardianship issues among parents who the other party was not agreeing to feed their child bleach. But even after Melissa and Amanda began their mission, there was unfortunately not much to be done by the authorities to stop these parents. The issue continued. Following the misinformation problem, Facebook and other platforms changed their policies and removed some fear-mongering content. At the same time, many groups related to fake autism cures were deleted. But the next day, new ones began to pop up. By now, the FDA had published several warnings about MMS, stating that the solution, when mixed, develops into a dangerous bleach which has caused serious and potentially life-threatening side effects. One could think that that would be enough to stop people from drinking chlorine dioxide, but very little can be done to ensure not another child would have to go through such torture. There will always be desperate and vulnerable people, and people who do not believe the science and prefer to get their information from people like Jim Humble or Carrie Rivera. For decades, Genesis 2 Church was able to continue selling MMS while U.S. authorities waited for an opportunity to shut the operation down. Marketing the solution as a cure for any illness was illegal, but as long as the church called it something else, they technically did nothing wrong. But then, Mark Grennan got himself in trouble after marketing MMS as a cure for COVID and continuing to do so regardless of the FDA's orders to stop. In addition, during one of his seminars, Mark admitted his church was a sham by saying, quote, "Everybody start a church and do it from there. You can sell them anything. Tell them Jesus heals you while you drink this." End quote. Mark's words were recorded by an undercover news crew and then heard by federal investigators who decided to pursue charges of conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy to violate the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, and criminal contempt. On July 8th of 2020, officers raided the headquarters of Genesis 2 Church of Health and Healing in Bradenton, Florida. As helicopters flew overhead, police, a SWAT team, hazmat crew, and FDA agents would barge into Mark Grennan's compound unannounced. Then, they busted into the family's safe, removing $65,000 in cash, gold, and coins. Agents seized computers and documents, confiscated thousands of pounds of raw materials used to make MMS, and then shut down the family's New York bank accounts. Agents also seized more than 50 gallons of hydrochloric acid and 8,300 pounds of sodium chloride. Mark's sons, Jordan and Jonathan, were arrested. But at the time, Mark himself and his third son, Joseph, were in Colombia. They were also arrested and extradited to the U.S. in July of 2022. 
Court records showed that federal prosecutors believed Mark Grennan and Joseph Grennan operated what they called a health restoration center in Santa Marta, Colombia, where they charged consumers around $5,000 a month to stay at the compound and dose themselves with Miracle Mineral Solution. U.S. prosecutors believe Mark Grennan made over $1 million selling MMS. Meanwhile, Carrie Rivera's websites and Facebook groups disappeared in addition to her book from most sources. Carrie was raided by German police in 2021 for an unknown reason. A spokesperson for the public prosecutor's office in Bremerhaven, Germany, told Vice in April of 2022 that the prosecutor's investigations against Carrie Rivera have not yet been completed. Unbelievably, Carrie is back in business, advocating for what she calls the health benefits of chlorine dioxide and the ketogenic diet. According to Vice News, Carrie uses telegram groups to dole out advice that's often extremely dangerous to her followers and even sets up private consultations, charging $175 per hour for an initial consultation. She regularly gives interviews with alternative medicine and QAnon promoters. In one of these interviews, Carrie admitted that her child has, quote, not fully recovered from autism, although she continues to insist to her followers that her methods and MMS cure autism. According to the American Association of Poison Control Centers, there have been over 16,000 cases of chlorine dioxide poisoning since 2014, with around 2,500 of those cases involving children under 12 years old. Sadly, that number includes a six-year-old autistic girl who was hospitalized in 2017 with liver failure. Not only have Mark Grennan and his family defied the FDA's orders to stop distributing MMS to church members, but prosecutors say Mark has threatened violence against the U.S. government and the judge presiding over their case in Florida's Southern District. His trial is set to begin on September 12th of 2022 in Miami, Florida. And what happened to Jim Humble? He actually left Genesis 2 Church long before Mark and his sons were arrested. Apparently, sometime around 2015, Jim and his business partner argued about Mark taking all the profits. Afterward, Jim packed his things and moved to rural Mexico to start a new life. Then, in 2016, Jim wrote an unbelievable blog post that read, quote, For a lack of a better way to express things at the time, or because others put words in my mouth, in the past, I have stated that MMS cures most of all diseases. Today, I say that MMS cures nothing. End quote. If Jim Humble had only been honest about MMS 30 years earlier, numerous struggling parents would likely never have made their children drink chlorine dioxide. Instead, we live in a peculiar age of misinformation where accountability is rarely upheld and consequences are few. At least some who started this bleach scam are currently sitting behind bars. But the real victims in all of this have no voice because they're minors, and they continue to suffer while their parents attempt to treat something that has no cure. Who knows what long-term problems these children may end up with at the hands of misinformation. If you are a fan of learning about scams, cults, and cautionary tales, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss an upload. Thank you for watching. My name is Josie, and I hope you come back for the next video.